What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Today, I'm here with my husband. Today, we are here to watch some Casual Geographic. We're a little bit late on this one. It was supposed to be a Halloween thing, but Chavez and I had a lot going on. So we didn't really make it to much spooky content. Whenever I'm here and you're here, we are right on time. You're right. Yeah. Always on time. Also, Living With Gave You is a horror movie. So it's basically baby, always baby. Halloween. I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always... Okay, sorry. Living With Me is not a horror movie. It's a musical. Which I guess for you would be a horror it's movie. It's the same. <laughs> literally. I was just... Yeah, literally the same thing. You were proving my point and I could not wait to bring it up. I mean, like, you know how they talk about people's like, you know, hells, like different levels of individual hells? Yeah. Like first, second, third, fourth level, all musicals. <laughs> it, it doesn't get worse for a long time for me. Yeah, sure, dip me in fire, whatever. But if you added singing to it, <laughs> now it's even worse. But uh, this is animal diseases that belong in a horror movie. Not a musical. It's gonna be gross. If there is singing, I will turn it the fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me here. I always like these Casual Geographic videos, even though they're getting weirder and weirder as days go on. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. I am super excited to see what this video has in store for us. Sure. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. There's nothing Why scary about that. Why are you running? <laughs> He just got a left one. How so what the uh, Come back. Look at that. It's always dope when ladies show up to uh, to prisons to do conjugal visits. You know what I'm saying? Is that a bestiality joke? No, nah, just they're getting along really well. Conjugal is sex. I thought it just meant they had fun times. <laughs> no. Well, guess they fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, spooky season. You knew this was coming. We're always talking about all the ways nature and the things in it can put you on a shirt, but we never yeah. talked about how diseases oh, can have animals permanently God. parallel to the ground. So that's what this video is. Animal diseases that are rated R for the regret I feel when I oh, see what researching them has done in my search history. And of course, viewer discretion is very much advised. Yes. Oh, especially no. for disease number one. What's oh, a no. Halloween video without a jump scare? This photo was taken just outside the Caribia Bay Hotel in Zimbabwe of what appears to be a hairless baboon. Mm. The deep pelted primate appeared to be an outcast, only following her true from a distance, almost as if she had been rejected for her appearance. And according to a nearby vet, the most likely cause for this abandoned baboon's condition, mange. Mange is oh, a nasty looking mange. disease caused by parasitic yeah. mites burrowing into the skin where their collective feces can cause severe allergic reactions and an unbearable amount of itching. Yeah. That's why the main calling card of mange is turning animals into the most down bad version of themselves. Right. And while the word mangy is usually an insult reserved yep. for dogs, these yep. mites can be a certainty from anything from foxes to bears to porcupines. Okay, hold up. Yeah, that dude, porcupine check it out, looks bro. crazy. Yeah, that bro. guy, he's struggling. <laughs> Have you even seen a porcupine <laughs> nose that clear before? <laughs> He look crazy. I didn't even know they had ears. He, he look like his wife stresses him out. <laughs> his wife? He has a wife? He has a wife. He didn't used to look like this. Then he met mm, his wife. Okay. It. And his wife yeah. wanted him to provide all this stuff. So then he had to get a better paying job. Mm -hmm. But the better paying job really stresses him out. But the fact and he even works though, long hours. Yeah, yeah. And even though he has mm -hmm. a better paying job, he sure. still ain't got no money because his wife just be spending all the money. And then don't even get him started on inflation. Exactly. <laughs> and even though inflation is hit, his wife still hasn't reduced her spending like at all. all right. Yeah. yeah. Just sits up and just <laughs> plucks them out one at a time. I used to work. I used to be the needle in the haystack. Actually, <laughs> birds like eagles and many, many that. more. In fact, the legend of the chupacabra was more than likely jump started by a severely mighted up coyote. And in 1996, there was an outbreak of sarcoptic mange that griefed a family of mountain gorillas in Uganda, even expiring one of their babies. Damn. The mites themselves aren't a death sentence, but they slowly weaken the target, making them much more vulnerable to infections. Oh, okay. I, I was getting ready to say, like, I didn't think you could die from that. Mm -hmm. But obviously, like, you just weakened and immune yeah. system. Yeah. They can easily spread, especially if you're a wombat who's burrow mates with a walking mite mosh pit. 
The mites are so persistent that in Pennsylvania, a black bear with more than 50% hair loss is considered a lost cause. And not only is it retired from life, it's also incinerated so the past tense bear can't possibly oh, infect God. any oh, others. Yeah. That's and yes, smart, mange is zoonotic, meaning it can be passed on from animals to humans. And Got when that it. happens, it's called scabies. To be fair, it's normally easy to treat to people, but those with weak immune systems or those taking immunosuppressants can find themselves gatekept from a life of comfort. There's right. also demodex mites, which <gasps> shack up in hair follicles and even a couple species that make their home in the human eye. Oh, so yeah, mange just might be the most aesthetically upsetting ailment here. The polar opposite of the next disease, because okay. where mange is visually visceral, zoocosis is almost purely psychological. Okay. You've probably heard of the condition where animals in captivity do the same thing over and over with no goal or purpose, almost like they're in a trance. And oh, got it. Wait, so, that makes that clip really sad. So he's getting what he deserves. I like that. I support that. How do we do that I to thought, more records? I thought he was mimicking her, right. but she's just making fun of him. She's a bitch. I hope she steps on a Lego. I hope that she's wearing shoes. With Legos in them. <laughs> so we're playing Uno. Like. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most popular examples of this are those videos of elephants swaying back and forth. Mm -hmm. Except zoocosis is much more than that. Of course okay. you have your swaying and almost neurotic pacing around their enclosure. But the zoocosis signature also That's includes excessive grooming, ah! personal punishment like self-biting and self-mutilation, turning puke into an infinite food glitch, and oh, coprophagia, even in animals that wouldn't normally do it. But the disturbing yeah. part is, like mange, it's believed that zoocosis can also be contagious. Mm. If an animal is housed next to one exhibiting the stereotypes associated with it, chances are that same animal will too. Damn. This captive psychosis is likely triggered by a lack of stimulation and enrichment, and it's more common right. in higher intelligence animals, mm. especially those that would normally have a wider range. Elephants checking both boxes is likely why 40% of captive turned pachyderms show symptoms of zoocosis. Aww. Orcas are one of the smartest non-human creatures alive and can travel well over 40 miles a day for food. And almost a year ago today, in 2022, a captive orca named Hugo tragically resigned from reality after violently slamming into his tank yeah, wall until he that. suffered a life-ending aneurysm. Yeah. And in 2005, a mother homogenous baboon groomed her baby so excessively that he looked like he came out the womb oh, beefing no. with wizards. To be fair, we can't really <laughs> prove that this was zoocosis working overtime, but bro got the Mr. Clean cut. That ain't a fade, it's a flea. He just looks sad, bro. He just, bro, why you let my mama do me like this, bro? Y'all was all watching 24-7 while she did this, and nobody stepped in. Step up for me, dog. He looked like a little old man. <laughs> <laughs> and then Casual Geographic is talking with just this, like, <laughs> serious voice and everything, but he's still making the jokes, bro. Oh, you look like a little ball sack. Damn. <laughs> but the most popular and probably most depressing case of Kosis was Gus. Gus was a polar bear that lived in Central Park Zoo for 25 years. Damn. At one point, visitors and keepers noticed that Gus would spend all day swimming in figure eights, sometimes for up to 12 hours straight. Keep in mind that polar bears can wow. cover nearly 50 miles yeah. in a day searching for seals. Not only did the zoo spend 25 grand on therapy for the bear, Gus went on to make history as the very first zoo animal to be put on Prozac. Speaking of which, the 25,000 bones of behavioral therapy basically amounted to the therapist saying, it be like that. This isn't an anti-zoo video or me trying to morally grandstand to y'all. I think zoos have the potential for a lot of good and a lot of bad. It's yeah. just that the bad can lead to a chronically pilled out polar bear. But wait, it gets darker, because with how far removed humans have gotten from nature, there's a legitimate fear that humanity as a whole could be suffering from zoocosis on a global scale. That That's joke crazy. about us being no different than ants stuck in a death spiral becomes less and less of a joke as time goes on. Yeah, doom scrolling, <laughs> yeah. right? Like people just going on, just skipping vid after vid mm -hmm. after vid, you know? And that's why we always work when we do like reaction vids, like make them as engaging as we possibly can. Right. You know, to like snap people out of this just like redundant, repetitive thing. Obviously, we sometimes watch meme videos. We're kind of just chilling. Yeah. You know, but we talk to you as people. Look you in the eyes if we can through the little screen. Well, I treat it more like a conversation than like watching a movie. Exactly. Although, to be fair, yeah. I talk a lot in movies well, get, too. We do the same thing. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> just uh, pretend like we don't. Anyways, that's what that's about, is trying to kind of snap that out. And yeah. that's why I think we have such an engaging community too. Absolutely. Do you remember the Will Smith movie, I Am Legend? You yes. know, before his wife publicly neutered him and then smoked both his family jewels in two packs? Well, yeah, the post-apocalyptic movie started with a doctor attempting to re-engineer the measles virus in an attempt to find a cure for cancer, instead yeah. infecting 99% of the human race. A pretty good example of what can happen when humans try to play God with the natural order. Another example is what happened in Florida, specifically Silver Springs State Park. It's Florida's very first tourist attraction, famous for having a couple Tarzan movies shot there. And in the 1930s, tour boat operator Colonel Tui was looking for a way to spice up his Jungle Cruise ride. So he brought in six Reese's macaques and had them placed on a small island in the park. And it was at this moment, they f***ed up. Apparently, nobody involved was told that the monkeys could swim, and the moment they touched down on dry land, the macaques proceeded to swim out to the mainland. And following lots of multiplying without a calculator, there are now currently hundreds of rogue macaques, with a good number of them carrying a deadly herpes virus. Herpes B is an incapacitating fuck? condition oh, that can cause severe brain inflammation, permanent neurological damage, and a permanent lease in a casket-shaped condo. Now, fear-mongering aside, the oh, chances of God. catching it from a monkey are incredibly rare. Right but not rare enough to be zero. But in 1997, say, zero. a researcher was working with a Reese's when she was splashed in the eye by indeterminate Piss. fluids. Yeah. Even after immediately flushing her eye out for several minutes, the 22-year-old died December 10th, 1997, Damn. almost exactly six weeks after first being exposed. According to the Center of Disease Control, since 1932, there have been 51 cases of people being infected with the B virus, with 21 deaths and an 80% mortality rate for those untreated. That same fatal virus is currently being backpacked by up to a quarter of the hundreds of macaques running around the Sunshine State. So, so you're telling me, yeah. if I see a macaque, Shoot it. Yeah, so what well, that's exactly what I'm getting to. Is like, why aren't they considered a pest if they have like a deadly virus that they right. carry? Like, no offense to any animals of course or lovers not. I'm out just, there. I'm really just you asking. Know? Are that, they endangered also? A quarter must be a big percentage, but a small number. Right, yeah. Yeah, must be. Worse, it's believed they shed the potent virus through their saliva. Ugh. So far, there's no known case of one of these Marion County monkeys passing off the virus to a human. The problem is, the monkeys have managed Yoink. to lose their natural fear of <laughs> humans. And there was even one incident where the park had to be shut down after a family was threatened and chased by an especially malicious yeah, attack. It's bro. the worst kind of invasive, and it's 100% our fault. And although the virus peddling primates haven't caught a human body, it's definitely one of those cases of F around and find out. Right. right. Okay. Good to know. One of the most unsettling diseases in nature is a sickness one. that affects deer, known as chronic wasting disease. Called so because it essentially destroys the animal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. In fact, sad. this type of disease is a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, a name that literally comes okay, from the what? fact that it causes several sponge-like holes in the brain. In the brain. It's like the forbidden yeah. final boss of trypophobia, and it's caused by a single misfolded protein Ew known as a prion. This prion triggers a chain reaction where the only outcome is a canceled life subscription, and the only thing the victim can do is wait for the sweet release of death. Damn, that's so Here's sad. what the end game of a deer with CWD looks like. It starts with a misfolded protein affecting and altering perfectly normal proteins. Okay. It's almost like a cellular level cheese touch, and the moment it starts, Aww. it's already over. Step two includes the prions exploding in numbers exponentially and accumulating yeah. in the body. The whole time the deer, elk, or moose looks and and acts perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. The deer can walk around with this disease for two whole years before the chronic Damn. becomes critical. Eventually, it escalates to the point where the prions manage to break into the blood-brain barrier, where they start destroying neurons, putting enough holes in the brain to get it cursed out by an octopus, and slowly wasting the poor, unexpecting deer. Deer with CWD seem unable to process anything around them, including danger, and if predators or playing freeze tag on the freeway doesn't take them off the senses, they die a slow and painful death to starvation as their brains shut down. The worst part is, the nightmare doesn't end once the deer does, since the prions responsible can exist in an area years after the victim, and can even be absorbed Jesus. by plants in contaminated soil. That's assuming they don't just leach into groundwater. In fact, the only surefire way to eliminate a prion is literally that. Gonna... Fire. That's Except, it's not as simple as cremating fire. a casualty. That'd be too easy. It's said that it takes heat at a minimum of 900 degrees Fahrenheit or Lava? 482 degrees Celsius to properly pack up a prion, and some sources say to Fuck. hike that up to 1800 to be safe. Dude, it's like you get stuck in the situation. It's literally like Pompeii. Yeah. The whole fucking area. 
See, and, and what, what's great about this media is because it's highlighting stuff that you would never hear about that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's you also have to remember this must be such a slow process of, like, entering into an ecosystem and persisting in an ecosystem right. at a percentage that's dangerous to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if there's a huge outbreak, maybe that's a big deal. Right, but, but this for us right now is not something that we currently need to be distressed about. Yeah, it's just like, it's probably just not a big transmission rate yeah. at all. You know, but to think that it's that hard to get rid of, it's we're not getting rid of it. No. That's just not a plausible thing to nope. destroy. But the part that makes prions one of the most horrific things not native to a horror movie is where they come from. It's mm. believed there are three main factors that cause prion diseases. Okay. Genetics play a relatively small part, with only 10 to 15% of cases in people being attributed to them. The second and by far most common cause is the disease being sporadic. Basically, that just means that not even science can fully explain where they come from, but that Bitch. it's like it happens out of nowhere. What? And the third is an infected deer contaminating something like a water source or a right. feeding station that with body fluids and passing it off to the next. And remember, not only can prions insist on existing years after the fact, keep in mind that most infected deer look no different from any other right, right until deer. it's time to disconnect from interface eternally. Yeah. That means that the three main causes of wasting disease are completely RNG, and mm. that is remarkably terrifying. And it's not just deer that can get packed up by prions. There's mad cow disease in cattle and scrapey yep. in sheep, named oh, after the fact that okay. it can cause them to compulsively rub up against things like fence posts until they huh. literally scrape their wool off. There's even a human equivalent, Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease. And while there's no known reports of a of human ever catching CWD, specialists have warned that. Grey's Anatomy. Shut up. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> With the thousands of CWD infected animals eaten by people a year, there's a growing concern that the disease may eventually be transmitted to people. But maybe it's still a lot better than the last, and in my opinion, the most horrific disease in this video. Okay. Because not only is rabies, rabies. one of the harshest death sentences nature yep. can serve, it is 100% transmissible to humans. Mm -hmm. Rabies is said to bury nearly 60,000 people a year. 60,000? <laughs> so much more than I thought. I was like, six. Hundred. Uh, he said, said the six. I was like, okay, probably like six thousand. Yeah. Sixty yeah, thousand. Yeah. Sixty. What the fuck are y'all? Are y'all out here making out with animals with rabies? What the fuck is going on here? Is that here? a wolf? I'm gonna fight it right? with my <laughs> bare hands and no gloves, and I don't own a, own a gun or a knife. I'm so that's so that's so distressing. And then I'm gonna kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, how is all these, like, how are all these people? What did, what did, the, what did that guy say in the freaking Godzilla movie? He's here for a, a food, a fight, or a fuck. Like, that's what's going on here? Yeah, that's what's happening. I'm so when, upset. The, like, it's 100,000 people deciding that. 60,000 are <laughs> losing the fight. And since the most common way to get it is through dog bites, it's the oh, worst in places with a dogs. high stray population. Okay. Which is why India, a country that criminalized murking stray dogs, has about 20,000 names crossed off the census a year by rabies. And it's children that are especially at risk, with about 40% right. of, of deaths coming from those 15 Puppies. years old or younger. Here's what it's like to be turned into a statistic by rabies. It starts with the virus entering the peripheral nervous system, usually through a bite. Then, it travels inside you through nerves until it reaches part of the central nervous system, or the spinal cord. From there, it's a straight shot directly to the brain, and at this point, you can start drafting your will because ain't no yeah. way. While you can treat the virus before it reaches the brain, once it once does, it you're almost brain, guaranteed you're to become a was. The virus then multiplies, then spreads throughout the body, slowly killing you from the brain out. But the underrated and truly sinister aspect of rabies is how it seemingly rewires your brain for its own purposes. One of the telltale That's signs crazy. of rabies is a crippling fear of water, where just the sight or suggestion of it can cause incredibly painful spasms in the throat and larynx. At the same time, the virus attacks the salivary glands, causing excessive drooling and the foaming at the mouth the disease is famous for. Yep. And that's because the virus is most concentrated in the mouth, and swallowing or drinking water would dilute it. So the hydrophobia helps keep the mouth and all the nastiness inside as that's potent so as possible. Yeah, and that's, that's not nuts. the only way rabies manipulates its mark. There's believed to be three stages of rabies in animals. Okay. You got the prodromal stage, and that's where the animal might start showing minor changes in behavior. And then you got the phase likely everyone associates with rabies, the yeah, excitative aggression. stage. It's been called furious rabies since yep. it's characterized by heightened aggression and random outbursts of violence. 
Animals that would normally be wary of people, such as foxes, can attack completely out of nowhere with bites. And remember, being a water bigot just makes that this bite that much more deep. toxic. Yeah. And then there's a paralytic or dumb stage, where the animal appears unaware and disconnected from the world around it. This is where you might see a normally introverted mammal show mm -hmm. zero fear in humans. But don't be fooled, they're still liable to bite to serve the virus's purpose. The nightmare usually ends with the animal flatlining to respiratory arrest as its body finally just gives up. And your fate is almost no better if you're a human, since rabies has one of the highest KD ratios of any disease, yep. even though it's also one of the oldest. It flexes a nearly 100% fatality rate, but nearly means there's still a chance. Right. In 2004, 15 year old Gina Gizzi contracted rabies after being infected by a bat, and the moment she started experiencing symptoms, she was, statistically speaking, a walking corpse. Right. Dr. Willoughby, who had studied up on rabies, figured their last chance was to put the teenager in a coma, in a last ditch effort to save her brain and give her body a reasonable chance to fight off the virus. Okay. About a week after she was induced, Gina miraculously started producing wow. rabies antibodies. And okay. after the girl stepping death, she would go through the grueling rehab of relearning how to walk, talk, yeah. and even stand. Because even when you're lucky, it ain't easy being geezy. You son of a bitch. You, my guy. You son of a bitch. My guy. It ain't easy <laughs> being easy. You know, because the rabies thing. Oh my God, please. But also, um, yes. I met this one girl when I went to summer camp. And she one got time rabies? At summer camp. No, oh. but she had like this crippling fear of rabies. So she didn't want to do anything at summer camp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, girl, we're going like... Fish are not going to give you rabies. You're good. Fish we can go into rabies. the lake. They're in like, water, she, actually. All she wanted to do was, like, sit in the cabin. She was terrified. Yeah. She, it was, like, a Christian summer camp, so she wanted to, like, sit in the cabin and read the Bible. And I was like, And they were okay right, with that, girl. for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah they definitely were like, go ahead and do that. I mean, it's the kind of place that had us journal about Jesus every morning. Yeah. I don't know. I was, like, in my journal, like, I mean, I don't really know how I feel about Jesus. Like, they you know. Back, send her home. <laughs> Get her out of here. She became the first person to ever survive the rabies virus without a vaccination and even went on to start a family. But don't get it twisted, the Milwaukee protocol that saved her has been used on 41 people mm -hmm. and only six have survived. Woo! The ones oh, that do man. still run the risk of waking up severely disabled, which is the best you can do when negotiating with death since that's exactly what treating rabies is. It's a horrifically debilitating disease, and even though it takes about one to three months to show symptoms after being infected, there have been cases of people walking around with the virus for seven years. Jesus. At the same time, if the virus manages to invade you close enough to your brain, you can easily be down bad less than a week after being right, exposed. With a virtually 100% kill rate and the thousands that lose their lives to it a year, it's definitely one of the most unforgiving viruses out there. Which is yeah. why the greatest basketball player of all time isn't Michael Jordan, LeBron James, or even Kobe Bryant. It's Manu Ginobili. Because during a Spurs-Kings game in 2009, a bat managed to find its way inside the arena, causing everyone this. to immediately what? panic. Right. Until the 6'5 Argentinian backhanded the bat and put it out of commission, he and proceeded what? to help lead his team to a 20-point win, along with a victory by TKO against the bat. One man again. managed to potentially solo one of the deadliest viruses of all time, <laughs> and he wasn't even a starter. That's such a funny thing to transition to. He's like, hey, this is the of a basketball player slapping oh a bat. Fuck. And you'll never guess what day this happened. Yeah, that's right. Not Happy Halloween, Halloween and stay safe out there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think the thing about rabies that's so like terrifying is how smart of a fucking disease it is oh absolutely you know what i mean yeah less than half of one percent of bats carry it so don't be afraid of bats it's the point <laughs> they're the never, never zero very good dude that's a good that was a really good really informative video yeah without being too like uh fear mongery about it you know what i mean yeah like these diseases exist they're out there they be fucking animals up and could potentially fuck up humans but also you don't need to be out there like you know all agoraphobic and shit about it you know he would make a really good baker his ratios are fantastic the amount of joke to serious content in this was perfect and baking is all about levels and measuring i'm just saying that was such a random statement to me but you didn't have to pause for so long you made it so awkward this is why people don't like us in movies people like me just fine 
a likable guy. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. I hope you guys had a safe and fun Halloween, regardless of if you went out or stayed in. Let us know what you guys did. We took my niece and nephew and my brother trick-or-treating. It was a great time. Fantastic, actually. And uh, that was our Halloween. And, and her then, brother likes trick-or-treating with me more than he likes trick-or-treating with her. He does. You didn't have to tell them that, but that's I don't fine. see why I wouldn't. And then we <laughs> went to sleep because we were tired and oh, we're yeah. old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, peace out, hope is gets it's, it's getting lit. <laughs>